Welcome to the Get Better Project, where your host Joe Bauer interviews the world's top fitness, endurance, and strength athletes to figure out what has propelled them to the top of their game. Let's be great. Let's be great. Listen, learn, and start getting better today. Here we go. Today, I have the privilege of interviewing six-time CrossFit Regionals athlete, John Gibson. He's not only awesome at CrossFit, but he's a super good dude. So if you get the chance to meet John in person, I highly recommend that you do that. And you are not going to be disappointed by this episode. He gives everything in this episode about how he trains, why he trains, his ups, his downs, his nutrition all of it. So if you have any questions at all, highly recommend that you reach out to me or John personally. And I hope that you enjoy this episode because it is a good one. All right. Without further ado, here we go with John Gibson. John, how's it going today, man? Not too bad. How are you? I am doing great. I'm excited because this is actually the first time that I've done an in-person interview on location. So you are the first. Welcome. Yeah, this is very exciting. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I feel blessed. Yeah, so I'm excited. And for those people that are listeners to the podcast or regular listeners to the podcast, they're probably familiar with hearing you because you were on our last podcast where we talked about only training and we got into that a lot. And so this podcast, we're going to dig in to you as an athlete, which I think is going to be really interesting. And I wish that actually we'd recorded some of the conversations that we've already had since I've been here at your yeah. gym. So um, for those people that don't know where we are, we're in Prince George, Canada, yep. right? At your gym, Gibson's mm-hmm. Landing. Yep. Gibson's Landing Athletics. Yeah. yeah. So uh, for those of those people that didn't listen to the last podcast, which I highly recommend that you do, it's uh, at thegetbetterproject.com slash 23. Um, give us your background. I'd love to hear you know, how you grew up, where you grew up, uh, your history with sports and hockey, obviously, and then how that brought you to the competitive sport of Christmas, or CrossFit or <laughs> fitness. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah, like, you know, we kind of brushed over it, uh, you know, when uh, Dave and I were on the last time. Uh, But uh, yeah, so I grew up a bit of a suitcase. Um, So I was born in Vancouver, uh, lived there for about five or six years. Um, Then we moved to Calgary. Um, I lived in Calgary from basically like grade one to grade six. Um, And there, you know, uh, I was, you know, really into sports, played hockey, you know, since I was like four or five years old played baseball, played soccer. Um, actually in Calgary, ex- uh, I developed exercising induced asthma and, uh, put on a bunch of weight and crushed itchy band noodles raw, um, ate a lot of candy. And, uh, I definitely was a bit huskier as a kid. Um, and so that, uh, um, it was, it was crazy too, because, you know, I, I remember having like, um, asthma attacks on the, uh, on the bench and, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a weird, really weird area in my life too. Um, and that lasted basically like from, from being a super skinny, wiry kid to being, you know, a little bit overweight, a little more, more self-conscious, still super active. Um, but, uh, then we, you know, grade uh, six, we moved to Burlington just outside of Toronto. And so, you know, over to the Eastern side, um, which is just a whole other world, uh, from a Western, you know, Western kid. Um, and then from grade seven to, uh, basically since I was like, or till 2021 lived in Burlington. Uh, and then grade seven to, I would say grade nine, I was still a bit that, that huskier kid. Um, and then I got the flu. I grew a little bit. Um, and, uh, and then all of a sudden, like, just the things started to change. So I lost a bunch of weight. I still literally rely on that flu. I think I had the flu for like a month or two or something like that. It felt like, and I just shedded weight and then I grew at the same time. Um, and I also, I think I watched Remember the Titans like a hundred times that, that, you know, at the same time. So I was doing like burpees and up downs <laughs> and stuff like that. I don't know what I was doing, but great movie, by the way. Unreal movie, right? And so, uh, it, uh, yeah. And so like all of a sudden, like it came from, you know, hockey trials, uh, where guys didn't even recognize me, uh, on the ice. So, um, that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it was pretty much just from, you know, uh, I, I kind of mentioned it last time. My dad, he was, uh, you know, I asked him, I was like, you know, why am I not making rep hockey? Why am I not making the next level? And he just, you know, he, he always supported me, but never pushed me outside of, you know, if I wanted to do something, I, I had to have 
I had to want it myself, right? And that was huge. Um, but he said, you just don't work hard enough. And then that clicked. And then the flu happened and I grew and it was all just like a nice storm that came in uh, at the same time. So, um, but then, yeah, played junior hockey there um, for a number of years, uh, played in the BCHL back in Prince George. So that's kind of when I was uh, 20, my parents moved back here. So I played a year here and then moved back to Hamilton um, and then played division three hockey for like half a semester um, in uh, Philadelphia, uh, you know, was unhappy with the situation, you know, where I was, um, you know, what, what was going on on the ice and stuff like that. And then I in, indulged in the hockey player lifestyle, maybe a little bit too much, enjoyed being a sick beauty more than I enjoyed actually being a hockey player. Um, and so me and my buddy ended up shutting it down. Um, and that was always been a big regret that I didn't push through it and I didn't kind of get my head out of my ass. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's all a bit of a blessing too. You know, the, the year after that was a big turning point. I could have gone probably one of two directions. Um, you know, I could have been that guy on the bar stool right now or talking about the glory days. Um, but I saw Rich Froning on, you know, TSN four or ESPN four for Americans, uh, (laughs) the Ocho at the time. And, uh, yeah, he, I was just like, yeah, I could do that. Right. Um, those guys look jacked. I don't right now. Um, I, 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 it seems like something I could, I've done a power clean, you know, before, like well, how hard could this be? Right. So got my level one, started coaching at a, at a local gym. Um, and then just kind of ran with it ever since. Um, and then, yeah. And then the, the CrossFit background from there is I qualified for regionals my first year, six months in. Um, I definitely couldn't have done that now. Um, you know, the time, the, the quality just wasn't there, of course. And what year was that? Oh, God. Um, just looking at the wall, 2013, 14, okay. I think. One of the two. Um, still the old Canada West. Yep. yep. Um, and uh, yeah, I did, you know, I did really well on a few. I think it was the hundreds workout with the 100 wall balls, chest bar pistols, dumbbell. I was the only guy to do 100 wall balls unbroken singled the chest bar because couldn't really do chest bar <laughs> but that's my again i have nice. little claims of fame to regionals like you know do something like really cool and then just be horrific at everything <laughs> else so uh yeah did the hundred wall balls smashed it felt good i was in my nike freeze i think i did all my pistols on my toes um i, I had high under armor socks on uh nice. probably still for my hockey bag um and then i just ragdolled that 70 pound dumbbell just full spinal too like i like we were talking about like in my element just curved just ripping it off the floor not giving a shit so <laughs> yeah. um and then yeah you know then competed at regionals ever since so six straight years so i guess i could from last year you just minus six years and that's when i started but yeah. uh yeah six regionals um i qualified for there's one i had to pull out where it was the, the snatch ladder i think that one was um, with the strict Nate or the regionals Nate, yeah, the strict okay. muscle ups and that I had to pull out. I ended up uh, busting up my shoulder pretty good, and I couldn't couldn't snatch, couldn't do anything really. So I had to pull out of that one. Definitely qualified out of the open, which I was pretty proud of. And um, then the next year I came back, um, blew. I was one of the the guys that blew the peck, so I got sniped out of the sky on the dips. Did you? Yeah, yeah. So that okay. sucked. It all stemmed from the, the bunged up shoulder, but I knew it right away. Yeah, I still finished the workout somehow, just grinded it out. Yeah. Um, but after, I was just like, yeah, something's gone. And uh, and yeah, so I had to pull out there. So I had, you know, back-to-back years were pretty disappointing. And then uh, the year after, so the the super uh, regionals where we Canada only let five guys in, so or the CrossFit only let five Western Canadians in. Uh, mm. That was the most stressful open of my life. My really? wife can attest. Like I was just a mental case um, because it's only five, and like we were bouncing around. I did I was did really well. I think I won the first workout, and then I did not do so well in the second, and then yeah. kind of bounced around, but ended up qualifying. Um, and then, you know, again, a couple claim to fames at regionals, you know, one Linda world record, not a big deal. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then just couldn't handstand walk, you know, uh, it's just too much volume for the old shoulders. And, uh, and yeah, I just, I think I came like, you know, third last in that workout. So I was first after day one, Bill Grunler chirped me for my horrific squat cleans on Linda. Um, you can watch the video and he goes, Oh, those don't look pretty <laughs> bill. I mean, first, like, what are you talking about? And, uh, so I, I always give him a bad time. I always try to remind him on Instagram that, uh, I, I'm not the prettiest out there or whatever. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so I ended up uh, winning that workout, doing really well, and then I came second to Vakowski in the dumbbell um, box jump over or uh, step overs on that one. Last one off the handstand push-ups. 
um, crept back on the toaster bar, crept even more back on the air bike, and then just ran train on that uh, step over. Um, but I had a cool conversation with Brent in, in the background because I was, again, had pretty bummed about my day two. And he was like, you know, we're, we're built to do one thing and it's step over the box with dumbbells. And that always kind of stuck with me going into that one. So <laughs> that was cool. But uh, yeah, and then, you know, took a year off and back at her this year with the qualifiers. So yeah, long-winded story, but that's that's there, me. There's so much to dig into. Yeah, here. me in a me in a <laughs> nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first things first. How old were you when you started learning your work ethic? Um, you know, my my mom just actually walked in too, so oh, that's uh, that's that's a good time. Here. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my work ethic. Um, you know. I don't know if I could pinpoint a, an age where I started to develop that. Like that, that moment where my dad kind of said, you don't work hard enough was definitely a big one. Um, because I, I do think I even like he always told me about in camps, like I would, you know, always kind of try to sit in the back and like wait for guys to, um, you know, go. And then I would kind of just like slide in there and always looked for like the easy way out, um, a little bit. And when he kind of gave me that dose of reality, I could have done two things with it. It's just, uh, you know, uh, shut down and and you know kind of be like now everyone's out to get me or i could you know buckle down and and put in the work and so i guess you know 13 years old is when i when that really clicked like i always wanted to work hard but i just i think i wanted i wanted the end result more than i wanted to the process and so once that hit i started to enjoy the process i started to enjoy working out i started to enjoy you know putting in the time and uh and i think that was probably the time where it really clicked so that's interesting. And I think that it, there's a lot of people in CrossFit that would like to be good at CrossFit or at sport or at life. They could take uh, a note from just working harder at this point. Um, so I l- always like to touch on it when people talk about that. Uh, do you have any takeaways that you kind of have internalized that have helped you to work harder at things? Um, yeah, I guess, um, you know, if, if there's any takeaways, it's you know, I think having sitting down and, and, and really trying to dig into like what you really want. So, you know, my goals, you know, since I started within the sport, um, it was to make it to the games, you know, it hasn't happened. Um, but there's other things like reflection. It's really hard. Like you always want the end result. You want to make the games and I'm really, you know, I, I, I probably should listen to my own advice more often, but, um, you know, being grateful for like what you've done, um, you know, what you've done so far and or the the connections you've made the friends you've made the path you've chosen stuff like that um so those things if 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 you can enjoy the process of it like that's so important right um in the end result you know it could lead to something better too so um yeah there's uh you know for people within the sport i think it can be just because of you know instagram and how popular it is right now you know they can look and see all the the top end people with you know living that that fitness life and it looks good um but those, that's a lot of hours in the gym that those guys and, and girls put in, right? Um, so, you know, loving the process is number one. Because if you don't love it, then just just stop. Just don't do it because it's too much, too too much, too many sacrifices you have to make. Absolutely, right? Yeah. So you've made it to regional six times. I mean, that in and of itself is a fantastic achievement. RIP regional, like, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I wish that regionals would come back. Yeah, I, I missed region. I love regionals. It's regional is great. Yeah. Um, what do you see as the difference between the athletes since you are a coach, since you are, you know, programming and doing so much with only training? Um, what do you see as the difference between someone like you that's able to make it into this high level athlete? And I consider, you know, regionals athletes like high, high level athletes. You know, if you make it to the games, that's freaking fantastic and, you know, super awesome to do it. But anybody that's made it to regionals has done some serious things right. Um, what do you see as the difference between the people that have made it to that level versus the people that haven't? Are there any things that stick out for you? Um, yeah, like, you know, I can't, I can't say like, there, there's definitely a, a point, um, you know, I, I could say that my, you know, it's all about the little things, making sure your sleep's good, making sure, uh, your nutrition's dialed in, your training's on point. Um, but you know, I did everything wrong and ended up, you know, still making regionals. Um, so like for, for me, like, you know, I definitely ate whatever I wanted to. I didn't really concern myself with sleep. Um, so I probably had like a, uh, you know, a small like predisposition to doing well at suffering for whatever reason. Um, but I, 
I definitely think that you need to, it's, it's hard, it's hard to explain, but like you, you have to be willing to, to make actual here. You have to be willing to make sacrifices. Um, I, and I don't know if some people want to, um, some people want, want to be fitnessers and fitness racers for life, but they're not willing to do those things. Like, let's say, you know, I, I basically stopped hanging out with people and became a hermit for, I don't know, like five years. Um, and so when I think about it, it's like, yeah, you know, maybe I didn't count my macros and maybe I didn't worry about my sleep so much, but I didn't go out Friday, Saturday night. So I'm getting eight hours of sleep. Um, I didn't, you know, I, I rarely drink. Um, when I do, I'm still kind of an animal, but you know, I, it happens <laughs> very, very few, maybe wedding season now, yeah. and now and again. But like, I, I think a lot of people aren't willing to do that. I never missed a training session. If anything, I worked out too much. Um, but uh, I, th- I think the, I think the big thing is like from anything from regionals to games, and that's what didn't make me to the games because I wasn't really d- willing to take that extra extra mile. I think. Um, but from from regionals to not regionals, it's the sacrifice. Like you have to be willing to put time into the gym. Um, I was willing to work through injuries again, maybe not the smartest, but I was willing to push through it. I was willing to not miss a training session. Um, like not just like a, like not miss a training session or miss a, I I wouldn't miss a workout. It didn't matter how bad I felt. Um, I wouldn't go out because I was too concerned that it would mess with my, uh, my workout the next day. I didn't want to be hungover. I didn't want to do those things. Right. So I did, I became a hermit. And so I, I probably, you know, detached myself from, you know, my friends and things like that. And they'll tell you the same thing, but like, yeah, man, you, you, you got to want it. And if you, if you're not willing to sacrifice, then like, do you really like, do you want to miss a workout because you're kind of sleepy and it's like, ah, you know, maybe I'll just skip today because I'm kind of tired. Like that just doesn't exist in my world. Um, I do it smarter now. I understand why I'm tired and all those boring things, but, uh, but yeah, like you gotta, you gotta be willing to sacrifice if you want to make it to that next level. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a, a, a fairly similar story myself when getting into huh. entrepreneurship and like shutting myself off from people. So it's really interesting that you bring it up as far as like a fitness thing. Um, so what do you think uh, is missing right now? from you making it to your goal now that you've had these things that you've screwed up upon or you've screwed up and you've you know seen from a you know 3600 foot view or whatever (laughs) what do you think it is that you have to fill in in order to make it to the crossfit games um it's like it's like the little little things um you know having my nutrition dialed like not not just like oh am i eating enough and like being dialed in like having a routine with it um so i have actually a buddy joe scally who's uh been on me about it and so i gotta make sure i email him back uh you know my three days of eating or whatever because he's gonna help me with it um but uh but that's number one like that is absolutely i think number one uh for me um and that will just tie into everything taking care of my body like getting regular treatments on it that'll be key you know making sure that my elbow and my shoulder and my knees like i'm feeling good sleep i'm pretty much dialed in um i'm feeling good about that um but it's like it's like that that little extra piece like not just like oh i ate enough today right it's like no like you knew you ate enough today because your schedule your meal prep everything's dialed like you don't think like brent like nerdiest human in the world like he's dialed in right like he's he does not he's not leaving anything to chance and i still leave those little things to chance which uh you just can't do sure yeah absolutely so a lot of people have trouble with sleep how do you dial your sleep in um yeah i i I do have a pretty good sleep routine um i there's things like watching tv and stuff like that that i still like to do but i've never really had a problem falling asleep it's more staying asleep um so making sure i sleep in a dark room um i limit my caffeine from let's just let's generously say 3 30 in the afternoon (laughs) which used to be a little worse me too (laughs) so yeah we talked about that earlier should be like noon and i should keep it down but i just i love coffee and i've never had a problem falling asleep so I probably, you know, I, yeah, I'm a little more lax with that, but, uh, you know, having that sleep routine, like I do the same thing every time. Like I, you know, have my setup. Um, I, I make sure no lights are in the room. They're not peeking in blackout blind, stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, and that usually is pretty good for me. The, the problem I have is waking up in the middle of the night randomly consistently. And a lot of that's, you know, sleep position that I'm going to try to do a little more research into. Um, and, uh, and like I'm generally sore. So I wake up and my shoulders numb or like things like that. So those are things I really want to, 
dive into a little bit more. So I've actually gone and done, you know, the, the sleep MD stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, been hooked up to the monitor and trying to figure out why I wake up and stuff like that. So those are things I'm trying to really dial in. Yeah. Cool. I like it. So how many hours a day do you spend training and being someone that likes to work really hard? How do you keep yourself from overtraining at this level? Yeah. Um, I train like I used to train two a days pretty well, five days a week with Thursday and Sunday off. Um, and then I went down to four days a week, two a days, um, with Sunday as a, just one longer session. Um, and since I retired, I just went to singles. My body felt better. I got stronger. And so I'm still pretty much at singles okay. right now with like maybe the odd second session where it's just like, let's say like low effort or functional bodybuilding style. Um, and then my body just feels better with that. I don't really like my capacity has always been very good. So I don't really need a ton of volume. I don't think I've been at it for a lot of years too, you know, 10 years, nine years or whatever it is now. Um, so for me to not overtrain is like, is one having confidence. That's a thing I, I really lack, which I think in a lot of athletes can contest to at some point in their career. Um, the confidence thing is the, the thing that I really struggle with. Um, and so making sure that I'm confident in my ability, that'll limit me from overtraining. That's like number one. Cause when I notice I'm overtraining, it's because I don't think I'm prepared or I don't think I'm ready. And so I start doing things outside of my program and outside of what I think I need to do instead of like, if I want to go and be active, like maybe just go for a walk. Like we talked about earlier, right? Yeah. Um, there's probably more benefit to my overall energy level to that than, you know, throwing down, you know, thrusters and air bike, um, or maybe doing me like, like my second session. If I really want something, maybe something more structural, maybe a lower effort, um, you know, maybe some accessory stuff, uh, but like knowing that I don't have to run hot all the time is something that's like, again, that's just comes down to like, like, do I believe in myself? Right. Like there's things I need to work on for sure, but you don't like w- win a workout worldwide and not be good at it. Sure. Right. Where I don't see that. I just see the handstand walk where I, where I was horrific. Right. right. And those are things that I, I really have to take out. Um, but, uh, and yeah, so confidence is definitely number one. Interesting. And how have you built your confidence? Uh, <laughs> it's probably like if I'm laying a foundation, I'm, I'm like, I, I've, I've just laid the first couple bricks. Like it's okay. slow. Like all of a sudden, like I'll have confidence. Like I know I'm going to crush this. And then like that little doubt seeps in. So like for me, honestly, like I got, a, I think I got a lot of work to do because I think I'm leaving a ton of potential out there just f- for the fact that I just, I, I, I just don't believe in myself. Um, and so if maybe, maybe this is me not being confident on the other end where I probably have more than I think, but you know, it's with everything in life, you know, uh, I always feel like I'm the underdog. So, um, it's something that I work on daily, but it's something I'm, I'm, I really struggle with. It's definitely a weakness of mine. Um, uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to slowly build up, you know, if it's like, you know, better, you know, self-talk and all those different things or reflection, being grateful for what you have. But yeah, man, it's something I definitely struggle with, you know? I think it's good to bring up because I think that a lot of people struggle with it. So whether or not it's fitness or, you know, body composition yeah. or whatever it may be. Um, so even having you that a lot of people look up to talk about how you struggle with confidence is a huge thing for the people that, you know, are looking at you and like, holy smokes, he's got a perfect body. He's got, you know, oh a uh, six time Have you seen athlete. my calves? <laughs> Let's be serious. I mean, I've got, I've got white guy calves too. They're just, not Oh, nice. Yeah. So they're, they're, yeah. They just yeah. runners calves. tall man. tibias, yeah. right? long tibias. That's, I was, yeah. I, yeah. I was reading this book though. It makes us really good at like ultra running and stuff. Oh so really? You, and just, I mean, better looking overall too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Right. So. You, you don't want to be distracted by nice calves, right? <laughs> no. We yeah. Sh- we should be running marathons probably. Uh, yeah. Know what? That makes but. sense. Yeah. <laughs> My wife would tell you otherwise the way I run. I'm just like a moose out there just clomping around. But, uh, uh, but yeah, man, no, it's it, but like, especially with our sport, right? Like we're like, you know, body comp's a huge thing. Like I think it's, it's, it's in everything, but like if you chase the body are you going to like, you're, you're going to leave performance on the table too. And I've, yeah. I think I've always struggled with that too. You know, yeah. I dropped to 202 and I felt really good about my body, but like I sucked. Like right. I was just lethargic. I, you know, I was weak. I, yeah. you know, I couldn't sustain high efforts. Like I was just, my performance was significantly lower, but I felt like I looked better. <laughs> um, and then I, you know, back up to 216 now and, uh, the abs aren't quite as visible. Um, the triceps are a little bigger though, but, uh, you know, it's, it's something that like I, you have to be like, okay, like it's okay that I have a little bit 
of more, you know, let's just say more skin right there. But like in comparison, like what's a little bit more, what does that even mean? Right? Like, like, do I feel good? Yeah. Am I performing well? Yes. Am I proud of my body? Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, I think, I think body comp is something that gets really twisted in our sport for sure. Oh, uh, twisted. And then like people, because we're so like in this bubble, yeah, we look at other people that maybe have zero body fat and think that that's the standard when if you look at as a population when you know the the average person that's working out like yourself is incredibly healthy is super lean and we're just you know we have a different standard that's not realistic yeah for sure and like even if you're going for like health like you know abs don't mean healthy right no. um sometimes it can be the opposite um but i think you know the the world has perceived, you know, health and fitness as, as, as a look instead of a feeling. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for our, for, for, if I can give any, you know, advice to athletes starting out is like, you know, don't, don't chase, well, I think it's with everybody. Don't chase a look or right. some, some ideal of what you think the world wants you to be. Um, and, uh, and find some more, um, you know, internal drive, I think is going to be massive. And I, I think I've dealt with that ever, you know, being like a, a shorter huskier fella growing up. Mm-hmm. I think that's something that definitely, you know, s- stems from a, uh, a, a young age for me, you know, being, you know, the chubby kid in class, uh, yeah. that's something that probably has always stuck with me. And I get, you know, all of a sudden, like I'll, a buddy will say a joke with me and I'm like, yeah, but I'm, yeah, like, it kind of still hits me. I'm like, ah, like too, too soon, man. Like go back to like <laughs> five-year-old John where he's like super emotional about that, but I hit it. Right. I, it still tugs on the heartstrings sometimes. So it's pretty funny where it's like, I know a, you know, I know I'm healthy. Like, you know, I, I know I feel good and, you know, I, I feel like I look good. And, uh, and so it's weird when those things set in, right. When all yeah. of a sudden you get something you flashback to a, a younger, more self, you know, uh, self-conscious you kind of creeps back in. So, you know, just, you know, finding that internal drive that was something that makes you happy. Like, don't worry about the aesthetics of it and that and it's harder. It's easier said than done, but like, especially within our sport, like it's all about performance, right? You're not getting an award because you look cut. Right. Right. So like if you, if you're, if you're slow, it doesn't matter if you have a six pack and, you know, huge shoulders, like it, it just doesn't matter within our sport. So chase the performance and also that internal drive. Cause if you're like, I want to look good, but I want to make the games. Do you though? Comes right. to that sacrifice, right? Do you like what do you what do you actually want? Absolutely. Um, on that note, do you know how many calories you eat? Uh, roughly, I'm about probably thirty five to thirty eight hundred cows. Okay. Um, I, I lowered it since I went down to one training day. Um, so I kind of fluctuated around like thirty two, thirty three. Um, on a daily, I probably don't know enough of what I'm at, which is another thing that kind of we were talking about. But um, like, I need to know exactly what I hit every night before I go to bed. Yeah. Um, but on average, I'm about that when I when I check in with myself. Um, <laughs> and how tall are you? I'm six, one and a half. Okay. Earn that half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, my dad's six, five and I was always pissed that I was never six, five. But now in CrossFit, it's just a blessing. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I'm just like, thank you, mom, for being five, one. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, well, and you're, didn't hear. you know, I'm six one two. I'm like, man, if I could cut an inch or two off of those calves, then yep. they'd probably look bigger. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'd be better at CrossFit because I wouldn't have to move the barbell as far and all that. Totally, stuff. just be just way you better, know? eh? Yeah. yeah. And if I could just shrink the arms a little bit, <laughs> right? Yep. No, it's uh, yeah, tall guy problems, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, but uh, but yeah, man, you know, it's it's something. You, if you want to be six foot in the sport, you, you like Fakowski, you know, came second possible right gives yeah, hope to the taller guys and out there but you do have to be that dialed in right totally it's not just saying all of a sudden you're short you're good right but uh you, you, you you're you, you've got to work with what you got right so yep efficient fast movement standards for you know, sure it's all it all comes it's all in there it. yep um so swinging back around when you train the one time per day, about how long is that session? It's like an hour and a half, maybe two hours on the long end. But okay. pretty much like an hour and a half is uh, is usually the the average time probably I spend okay. within that session. And at your level, how much um, mobility and outside of the gym or like recovery stuff are you doing? Um, I, I definitely do way more than I used to. Um, like I used to do, do zero. Like I, I don't even know if I warmed up and I just like did some arm circles and started. And now like I think about it, I'm like, oh, think about all the repetitions you missed from like a 15 minute warm up because I think it adds up, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you're doing you know, side planks or you're doing, you know, uh, reverse flies or whatever you want to do to, to, you know, get your body ready to go. Like those, that's like just, you know, 
hours and hours of repetition and accumulation work that you wouldn't get otherwise. So it's not just a warm up, but it's, you know, providing structure and uh, support to your muscles and all those things. Um, and so outside of that, um, I, I probably a lot, like I would say like maybe a half an hour outside of my training to it. Okay. Um, and if that's mobility work or like, I've always had relatively good mobility. So I've never really had to do extra amount to get into ranges. I've always been able to hit, you know, everything pretty well. Um, but like when the aches and pains set in, you know, I know that I've probably been slacking, getting a little tight here and there. So I try to do about a half an hour, probably a day on my rest days. I try to just take them off completely. Okay. Like don't, I try not to do too much. I'll walk twice a day. Um, but other than that, I try to just, just even mentally just like, just shut it down from being active in the gym setting. And do you have any recovery tools that you really like that have helped you a lot in the past? Um, like, uh, like, like different like bands or like, yeah. Like, do you have any, yeah. Do you have anything that, you know, has really helped you? Um, like for example, I would say that, you know, I've done a lot of cold therapy and that seems helpful and yeah. Um, massage has been number one for me. Um, I, I, I like, it's really saved my shoulder. Yeah. Um, my wife's a, a registered massage therapist. And so Lucky. that's been a lifeline yeah, for <laughs> sure. But like, that's been number one and I'm not just pumping her tires or anything, but <laughs> she's the best. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's something that's been really helpful. Um, and that's probably saved me and saved my shoulder. Um, and you know, when I first pulled out of regionals, that's how I met her. <clears throat> When she actually walked into the gym and I was trying out the snatch ladder and, you know, I go for the 185 and I fail it and I go for the 185 and I fail it. And she's standing on the other side of the gym looking for information about signing up. And, uh, and I missed my last one. I got rap music playing on and I have my belt and I just throw it and I'm just like, fuck. And then all of a sudden I like look over and I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? Can I help you? And she's just like, instantly she fell in love. She can <laughs> tell you otherwise, but that's for sure what it was. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, gave her the spiel uh, about it or whatever. And she's like, it was kind of cool how you could turn on a dime like that. And it was like, yeah, you're very frustrated. I could tell something wasn't going right. And then, you know, you saw me and you're, you know, you're instantly like, oh, hey, like, you know, can I help you out? And so she, she, I think she appreciated that. And then I do think she fell in love with me that first moment. So even though I couldn't <laughs> snatch, she still loves me. Right. So, but, um, massage has been key. Yeah. I think that's probably number one. Um, but like the recovery tool is doing less. It's probably been my most beneficial. It's just less training. Um, that's allowed my body to actually recover. Um, it's interesting that you say that. And I'd like to, you know, uh, get into that even more because we've talked about how you've done two days and then gone down to a single time. And I come from, I'm cut from the same cloth. So like more is better, more is better. And then you burn yourself out and you can't do anything. So how do you really interpret that to, well, for yourself, but then also for other athletes that you're coaching or people that are listening, how do they know when to turn it off? Oh yeah, man. Like you, like you said, like you get it, right. You know, we had this conversation before, like you just, something internal about loving to to sit in that dark place and just like hold on longer than other people can or other people want to, because you almost like crave it. Right. Um, you know, what I try to tell my athletes is, uh, you know, there's a guy I can think of, I just love him to death and he'll probably know that I'm talking about him, but, uh, he just loves to grind and I love it about him. Um, so getting him to slow down is always tough, but you know, I think just having constant communication with intent with the athlete is key. Like, like, what do you want? Do you want to make the games or do you want to get better? Do you want to do this? Like this will help you trust me. I've been there. Um, I think having trust with your athletes, number one, you know, do they trust what you're talking about? Right. Um, and then always coming back, like if, you know, something happens and they overtrain and they have a little tweak, trying to revert back, not scold them or anything, but like, be like, Hey, like you, this is why we're talking about it. Like, you know, you hurt your back or your shoulder, your knee or whatever. Like, let's look back at your training. How much extra work did you do? Oh yeah. You know, I did this and this. Um, so like for me, like I just, I, I could still grind my face off. Like if I had, you know, two months to live, the first thing I would do is just work out as much as I possibly could. Like that's probably people would be like, you're an idiot. But I'm like, yeah, like that's something I absolutely love. Right. And I love, I wouldn't worry about overtraining. Right. Cause I, you know, only have two months left. So I'd overtrain my face off. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, you, you just gotta, you, you gotta tell yourself that, you know, it's, it's, I guess I still struggle with it, but you know, what, what's, what, what's your goal? Like, do you just want to overtrain to overtrain? Well, go do that, but you won't, you won't, you won't make the game. So like if this is me talking to me, 
Um, you won't make the games by doing that because you'll be weaker. You'll be more tired. Uh, you'll get injured. Um, so like, yeah, yeah, I love doing that. Um, but it does it, does it match with my overall goal? No, it doesn't. Okay. Well then be smarter. Right. Um, but you know, what, what, what do you think about that? How do, how do you kind of manage that? It's a great question. Um, I struggle and yeah. I talk with people like yourself that, you know, I think are smarter than me and I try and get information and I use things like whoop and yeah. I, not that I think something like whoop is an end all be all, but I try and take all of these different metrics and put them together and then test out things like you're saying, like I went to four days a week for a little while where I was yeah. only training four days a week, about an hour, half at a time and saw some gains from those types of things. So I don't personally, I haven't found the answer, but you know, I, I kind of like the process. It's like yeah. anything else. It's cool to, to go through the process yeah. and uh, training is a process, figuring out what your recovery should be as a process. So, you know, if you figure it out, let me know and yeah. I'll do the same. I'll let you know if I figure it out. Um, but it's kind of this, this fun thing where like how, how, how much can you train to get the maximum amount of results without falling off the cliff? Yeah. Cause you know, it's, it's interesting cause we live in a, we work in or we live in a sport that promotes, you know, overtraining more or less, right? Always going hard, always doing more, at least like early on. And now it's more people are, are becoming, you know, yeah, training less, resting, recovering is very important. And it's nice to see that. Um, but we also live in a sport where trying to disconnect from your body when things get dark is yep. something that we do and we do very well. Like, okay, I don't feel my, you're on the air bike, you know, I don't feel my legs, you know, you go somewhere else, you, you shut it off. We're like, yeah, we got to be very body aware, but we also have to disconnect. Cause it's like, like, do you really want to feel your legs on the air bike when you're doing air bike sled pushes, thrusters, your legs are blowing up? No, you want to disconnect. You want to like, it's like that car ride. You forget how you got there. That's what you almost want to have a workout be like, right? You don't want to actually feel the pain. You have to disconnect. So I think we do that a lot. So I think it's it's tough for us to reconnect with our body at the end of the day where it's like, you know, we go, oh, I have an ache and pain. No, 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 I'm fine. No, I'm good. Oh, I actually feel awesome. Like, so you almost get that like self-talk where you're talking yourself out of things where you can be like, it's okay, you're tired. You just like murdered yourself for two hours. Like yeah. you should be tired. You should have your rest day tomorrow. Um, so like reconnecting with the body is going to be really big and really key for us, um, especially for people that, yeah, like we, we always want to go hard. We love it. And, but you know, that mental side of like disconnecting, I think that's, that's an, like a, a spot that maybe, maybe we don't talk about enough. Right. Yeah. Um, because, you know, no one wants to look weak or look like they're not training um, hard enough. Right. So, you know, just like internally looking back and th I think it can go the other way. I think people can be like, Ooh, I'm a little tired today. I think I'm, I think I'm just going to take another rest day and they can start missing those workouts. So finding, uh, finding that balance is going to be really key and it's really hard for people. Right. Yeah. Um, so always seeking out, like you said, seek out people. I, I do it all the time. I seek out people that are way smarter than me. Um, and you know, I, I think my experience is where, where I shine, where I try, I, I can, you know, relate to people and I can relate to, you know, concerns that people have or stresses that they have, because, you know, I feel like I've been there uh, mm -hmm. and I've done it. So I think that's something where I really strive, um, over and above, you know, you know, knowledge base. I think there's guys that can talk shop probably a lot better than I can. Um, but I, I feel like I can relate to, I'm just, you know, that, that people's coach, you know, sure. I can, I can, I can relate, to, uh, to, 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 to the struggles and stuff like that. Cause I've been there. So speaking of coaching, uh, do you have a coach? I do. Yeah. And so, um, I, I do a combination. Um, I, I follow, you know, Dave, uh, you know, he's going to fix my snatch and do all those good things and make me super strong. Um, but I also have uh, Sam Smith, which I've been with for the last year. Um, uh, from big dogs. And, uh, you know, he was just down here the other weekend. Um, and we, uh, uh, and we threw down and, uh, and, you know, he's been really helpful. I was with Mike Fitzgerald from OPT before that. And he, you know, I think it was actually Mitch, Mitch or Joe or Brent. It was at, um, an open workout down, um, at Rocky point CrossFit, um, uh, in the lower mainland. And, uh, you know, that's how I got kind of connected with Mike Fitzgerald. And cause I was just like, you know, doing 275 grace horrifically and like doing random stuff. And they just looked at me like, man, like, go talk to Mike, like, <laughs> yeah. like figure your shit out. And, uh, and so I was with Mike for a couple of years and, uh, and he had yeah, definitely opened my eyes to, uh, a whole different way of training. I just remember like he'd give me like an increasing effort work, you know, five rounds of, 
you know, whatever. And it's like, increase your pace each set. And I looked at it. I'm like, how about I just go hard every round? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, see a mic. And then I'd be like, yeah, that was awesome. And he's yeah. like, so how'd it go? I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know if I increased my pace. I probably got worse. And he goes, yeah, it's the, like, like little things like, yeah, no, that's not correct. Like do this, this, and this. Uh, and I remember just like, it just being like opening my eyes, like what? Like I, like, I don't have to like, red line I don't have to send it like 24 7 and it's uh it was it was eye-opening to my training um and definitely helped me grow as an athlete and a coach um so yeah and now you know jumping on with the only guys uh just again expose myself to 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 better and better coaches and um and yeah it's gonna be you know I'm really excited about where I am right now um I don't feel like I you know I probably left stuff on the table, but I, I do like where, where I'm at and kind of where things are heading and the people I'm in contact with and the, the people uh, I've surrounded myself with within the sport. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I definitely am a huge advocate of surrounding myself with the people that I want to be like or learn from constantly. I yep. think that's, that's a huge, huge attribute. So it's cool to hear you say that. Um, I'd love to know, uh, number one, how you go about picking a coach and number two, I'd also like, before we get into that, touching on this idea of not sending it all the time, because <laughs> um, we kind of talked about this uh, before the podcast um, and how it can be an attribute to pace or yeah. uh, not go 100% to the dark place all the time, even though let's say that there's a workout that comes up and we just want to hit it hard and hold on, essentially. Yeah. Um, so if you could, number one, go... go Tell us about pacing or not sending it all the time and then how to pick a coach. Yeah. So like to pick a coach, um, I think experience is key, um, especially within our sport. I've talked with Dave about it a lot. Um, if you don't understand, it could be with every sport, but like with ours, like if you don't understand how it feels to perform a certain workout, like you just have never done it. Um, doesn't mean you have to be a games athlete or anything, but if you don't know how it feels to kind of go into that dark place or you don't know how it feels like to recover from a heavy weightlifting session or, um, you, you, you know, if you, if you haven't gone through that stuff, it's, I, I think it's really hard to relate to the client. So as a, as a client, I definitely look for people that have been there, you know, Mike been at the games, uh, Sam competed at a regional level. Um, Dave competed at a regional level. Uh, Mitch competed, at a games level, but damn near games. They, level. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a, that's a, you know, he like ridiculously unreal athlete. Um, um, you know, Dave as well. Also unbelievable, uh, weightlifter. Um, look for people that have, have done it and then have a conversation with them. And if they, if they know what they're talking about and you feel comfortable with them and you've built a rapport, um, I don't think there's, you know, I think that's kind of like the perfect harmony, you know, have they been there? Um, can you relate to them? Um, are they saying the right things? Do your own research within your sport too. know your sport. Cause if you go to a person who, you know, let's say even though you know, they're a games athlete and they start, you know, talking about all these different things and you've done your research and you're like, well, that doesn't actually make any sense. Like maybe they're just trying to, you know, sell you, you know, snake oil. Um, so, but, but how would you know that if you didn't know about energy systems or strength training, if you just go in blindfolded, I don't think that's good either. I think you need to do some research within your sport and then you can, you know, relate to what the coach is saying. Cause if they're spitting off stuff that's way above your level and you're like, uh, what, then you might take everything they, you know, they say, uh, to heart, or you might just not be able to, you know, retain anything they say or whatever. So like, understand your sport um feel comfortable with the coach um and have that coach have experience within the sport of crossfit i think some i think really those are probably the the three main things cool love it and then uh sending it <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and like i said we had a conversation about this earlier i tried to do a workout that you know you actually programmed and it was at 80 to 85 percent, or it was either you or dave that programmed it i'm not sure and uh it was really hard so we had a, a good conversation about that. How do you tackle that when it, we're in a sport where it looks like everybody is sending it all the time and that's how you get better? Yeah. Um, you know, simple. If you send it all the time, you're just going to burn out. Like that's just, it's just inevitable. It might not be tomorrow. It might be the, you know, two years down the road, but it's going to happen. Um, and I do believe you're going to leave a lot on the table because um, recovery is everything, right? And if you're just sending it every single day, you know, like we were talking about earlier, so you gain 15 extra reps in a, in a workout that doesn't matter. But 
you your you you know your back sore tomorrow so you can't lift correctly or your you have doms like two minutes after your workout like i was talking about <laughs> dt uh that qualifier like if i did that every day i would just i would never train like i would just i would eventually be broken and i think that's what's happened throughout my 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 crossfit career is that i i definitely overtrained and i became broken there's two years where i couldn't compete in a full regional weekend well, i did too much right um and so, you know, you have to learn how to pace. I think you can also learn how to really understand yourself as well. So like if you're, if you're able to work under different intensities, you're, you're able to understand, you know, where your limitations are, you're able to uh, change gears if you have to. So if there's a movement that, you know, uh, really elevates your heart rate or really just bags you, um, knowing how to pace that workout and then knowing how to increase it at other areas you are strong at, or maybe you have to slow down, you know, if you smash ring muscle ups, but, you know, doing the 10 unbroken is going to you know fatigue your arms just enough that you can't you know string whatever it is um knowing how to pace yourself is going to be so huge and you're just going to gain so much more knowledge about yourself if you can work under 50 60 70 80 100 percent um because then there's times where you really need to send it so like if you're always you know doing a, a workout at a hundred percent of what you think is a hundred percent effort for let's say eight minutes all the time are you really going a hundred percent because at some point you're you're just gonna you're, you're in survival mode right um, and I think that's a, a pretty common conversation that's been going around in our in our crossfit world now is is uh is like do we really go a hundred percent all the time too like I think it's important to like hit the air bike for 15 seconds and just go ham, you know, go at 110% effort, which, uh, or, you know, if it's mixed modal, you know, going hundred percent effort for a minute and then fully recovering, like you got to hit those different intensities. So, you know, I think, I think we, we, we need to learn how to not send it and how to actually send it. Right. And right. then, and then everywhere in the middle is key. Yeah. And how have you figured out what that feels like for you? Yeah, that's tough. Um, lots of years of experience, like, you know, 85% effort, let's say I get, you know, it probably gets thrown around there a lot in, in that kind of energy system work. Um, understanding what that is, is it's just like a lot of practice. It's slowing down. So like, I know what it feels like to like hold onto the bar until I can't and then hold onto the bar until I can't and have that slowly drop. But how do you, how do you pace out your workout so that you can, you know, keep the same pace up throughout the 10 minutes or whatever it is. Um, I th it just takes practice. It takes, you know, putting the ego aside a little bit, um, slowing down maybe more than you think you have to. And then after the workout, reflecting on what, how you feel that's, that's big too. Or, you know, mid workout connecting with your body back in, maybe not shutting off, right. Being like, okay, after these clean and jerk, okay, yeah, I feel pretty good. Okay. That's, that's a good pace. Or, you know, after these ring muscle ups, oh my God, I can't, I can't see straight. Like I have to slow down. Okay. Well then, then at least, you know, and you'll fail sometimes you'll be like, I went way too slow or you'll speed up or be like, hey, I went way too fast. That's probably easier to do for, for guys like us. Yep. <laughs> uh, but you know, if it, it's, it's fine to mess up and to, to try things and to be like, okay, well I, you know, I held threes, you know, but it was just too much. And I, 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 my pace slowed way down. Right. I think recording, you know, uh, recording your times is obviously always a big thing for us, but like according your rounds, you know, you got five rounds of something that's going to take you 15 minutes. And, uh, your first round was, you know, two thirty, and your last round was five thirty. It's like, well, if you didn't, at least be aware of the clock and be aware of your rounds. How would you know that you were that far off? Right. If you just like, Oh, took me 15 minutes. Awesome. Smashed it. Yep. Right. Be like, well, you know, the first round took me three and the last round took me three. Well, that's pretty consistent. Right. So like when you go into competition, I think that just gives you so much more ammo. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And something that I've found that's interesting, like I'm really bad at this. So I think I'm, I'm really interested in hearing how, how you attack it. Um, is I've had my watch and I'll put the lap timer on so oh, I don't sick, have to yeah. like actually look and think about it because I can't think during the work. I can hardly, <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. I can hardly count, man. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I'll get done with a round and sometimes it's not even the end of the round because I can't think, but I'll try and I'll click the lap timer and at the end I'll go back and look at my Garmin and, or, or whatever and just review what you're saying there. And that's been super helpful. Um, <clears throat> to change gears just a little bit, do you take any supplements? Uh, just creatine, just for the pump, just creatine for yeah. the pump. And I, uh, and like, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I take creatine. Um, I've just, you know, I've done some research on it and, uh, you know, I'm probably off of it for a while, but I, you know, I feel really good on it. My body responds well. And I think there's some, some good evidence that it may, you know, 
it may help. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, other than that protein, you know, I try to take if I, again, just if more or less for me, just to make sure that I'm getting enough, uh, you know, calories, enough protein in and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not a end all be all with, you know, this protein is going to, you know, make or break my training session. Um, I try to take a carb replacement as well, even, or, you know, if, if I don't, if I can't get a carbohydrate in after I work out, I really like to, you know, make sure I get those in, you know, 30 minutes after I work out kind of thing. I always just feel better on it. Yeah. My recovery wise. So sometimes I'll do that. And then I just take like, you know, fish oils, you know, multivitamins. Um, that's pretty well it. Like I'm pretty basic. Like I'm not very exciting. Like I don't have <laughs> anything I super plug or, um, maybe just cause no one knows who I am and no one's giving me that sponsorship or whatever. Um, I mean, <laughs> somebody should, if oh, somebody yeah, is of course, listening right? to this and you've got some really super creatine product. Yeah, you... Like if you're purple K and you just want to like <laughs> tap into the 15 year old me that's, uh, dying, like it, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I just, I've never really been big into it, uh, into supplements that way. I think there's probably a lot of benefit, especially to help, um, you know, people like us that just push the limits. Um, but I think if you, if you can do the little things like, you know, making sure you're, you're chewing your food and making sure you're drinking water and you, you, you are, your nutrition is dialed in. I think a lot of those things can clear up issues. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, there's, yeah. And that's kind of like, you know, my, my, my approach to it. I like to keep it simple that way. Yeah. I think that that's a big thing too. And I, I bring up the question because a lot of people ask me, you know, what supplements do you like to take and blah, blah, blah. And it always comes back to, you know, well, how's your diet? Is your food that you're taking in, you know, really good and nutritious? And then are you looking at the yeah. supplements that you're taking? Well, it's like great right in the name it's supplements. It right. should, you know, like supplement an already balanced lifestyle or supplement <laughs> already. Like uh, it's not the, uh, it's not like, Oh, you take NO explode and you're going to PR every day. No, yeah. you might, your eyes might blow out of your head, <laughs> but uh, like if anything, uh, over-reliance on supplements is going to have the opposite effect. Right? Oh, absolutely. Um, mentally and physically, like uh, I drink enough coffee. Don't need a pre-workout. Right. Just don't. No. Um, a, or if I'm like, oh, I didn't get my protein in. I'm brutal now. Like I've, I'm all of a sudden a hundred pounds less on my snatch. I can't afford that. Yep. Right. So, uh, you know, mentally, like you got to make sure that it is balanced. Like, yeah, do if, if, if you have that strong base, yep. like the supplements can only just, you know, just help you out. They're not going to make or break it for sure. And that's for like general health to professional athletes. Right. Um, if you're dialed in, like everything else is just kind of gravy. Yep. Heard it here, guys. That's why I talk so much about kale and spinach. So, oh yeah, um, kale and spinach, the way to go. Yeah. <laughs> way, way more interesting than creatine, although creatine gets all the rap. Oh you know? yeah, it's just so good, right? You just look way better on it. Back uh -huh. in the day, I just remember, uh, you know, GNC go back into the the case or whatever, and they got to get the key out, and they like slide out the purple K, and you look like you're in like you're looking around for cops or your parents, <laughs> or you're like oh, they don't know I'm on the creatine. Uh -huh. Like I love it. So. Uh, yeah, no, it's, yeah, I just, I, I, I've just always kind of felt good on it. So just keep, keep it rolling. Yeah, that's cool. I, like a side note, a funny story is when I was growing up, my mom had to go with me into the GNC. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. <laughs> and she, she like did the research beforehand to make sure it was safe. And luckily yeah. I'm still here. So. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> my parents didn't want me on the creatine. And so, uh, I, I had to sneak it. Oh yeah. And so I remember I kept, where did I keep it? probably under the bed or like with my Pokemon cards or something like that. Somewhere they Does your never... mom know this? I mean, she can't hear. No, I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Oh man, if she knew I was on it still now, she'd probably be rattled. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so funny how those stupid little things work. Eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You think you're just yeah, such a badass. It's Absolutely. like, you're just having creatine man. Relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what is, what about being a high level athlete is the most fun for you? And what about being a high level athlete is the most difficult for you? Um, the most fun, um, I love training. So like, I love training to be a high level athlete, if that makes sense. You know, mm -hmm. even if I was retired, like really retired, um, I'd probably train in some capacity and I, I do like that. I do like striving for something. Um, I've, I've never really enjoyed the actual competing side of CrossFit, which is weird. I do like the, the winning side of like doing well, but like I always, again, I always get really stressed out and I get really nervous and stuff like that. But the, the training stuff is, I, I just really enjoy it. I love it. I love 
you know, coming in every day and having a purpose and, and, and giving my full effort into it. Um, that's the process of it, uh, of specifically training and working out is probably my favorite for sure. Yeah. Um, and then the people you meet is, is, is awesome. You made some great friendships along the way. Um, I think that you can take for granted within that as well. I think that stuff's really cool going to competitions, being able to relate, meet people like you and chat and build friendships and that, um, is, is really awesome. And then the least favorite part of it is, is definitely the stress of it all. Um, the, the mental stress is it's, it can get exhausting. Um, the physical stress of, of being in pain. Like, I think it's a big thing going on in professional sports with, you know, Andrew Luck, Gronkowski retiring at 29. Um, you know, yeah, like our bodies get put through a lot. Like, am I going to enjoy the day where, um, you know, I don't have to push through, um, something if I don't want to, Probably, yeah, um, at least to a point. Um, so I, I, I think the constant like, you know, okay, I'm exhausted or okay, I'm, you know, this, I think that part can definitely get to you. Um, and so that's probably something I don't overly enjoy, um, having to always kind of like, like wake up and be like, no, I got this. I have a purpose um, to, to what I'm doing. So yeah, that stress mentally and physically, definitely it, it takes a toll for sure. Um, but but it's probably also the thing I love, you know, I love being tired. I yeah. love, you know, feeling accomplished that way. So I think it's a little Jekyll and Hyde thing there as well. Um, but yeah, the stress of competition probably too, I probably will be happy when it's, it's over, even though I technically retired and then came back because I missed it. Like it makes no sense. Just a walking contradiction. But, uh, I think what you love is maybe also what you don't love at the same time. Right. Right. Um, you know, you love the sport, but the sport also has a price, right? Um, yeah. It's going to be nice to be able to, you know, have a beer and not not feel guilty about it, right? Um, even though, you know, my lifestyle doesn't, isn't real conducive to that, it'd be nice to have that, that, that stress away, sure. you know, a little bit more where it's like, oh man, like I ate that, you know, slice of pizza, like I better get it dialed in. Like not because like I should and I shouldn't have pizza every day, but like just because it's like, am I doing everything I can right. to, 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 for my overall goal? I think that can be, I think, I think you can probably relate that to anything, but that's something that's definitely very stressful about, you know, competing at a high level. So. Sure. It's kind of one of those things for high achievers where it's like, you know, that you need to, um, do the thing that is stressful in order to reach your goals. Yeah. So it feels good once you've done them, or even like if probably if you compete enough, then it becomes less stress. It's Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, like, I think you like the grass is always greener too. Like you want to live that muggle lifestyle, but, uh, but then all of a sudden you're there and you're just like, <laughs> nah, now this isn't me. I like to throw down and I like to, to be around people like minded like that. And so, uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 it, yeah, I think it's all, it all comes down to, you know, what you truly want. And as long as it still aligns with what you want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, a lot of these questions were have come up from people that I've asked, what do they want to know about high level athletes like yourself? And something that I, I say for towards the end here, what I think is interesting is do you ever feel like giving up? And if so, what keeps you going when you feel like quitting or giving up? Oh, I probably feel like quitting every day. Uh, it's probably like, you know, the people don't want to hear that or you know, say it out loud, but like, you probably have doubts all the time. You miss a lift. Why am I doing this? Uh, you, um, wake up tired. Why am I doing this? Like, I think that goes into your mind all the time. Um, but I think the moment when you, when you can't pick yourself up out of it, um, I think that's the, the time you need to shut her down. Um, where it just doesn't like, it doesn't matter what you say. Like it, uh, it's, you know, it's, um, it's just something that like, you just can't kind of convince yourself to keep doing. Um, I, what I do to, to talk myself out of it when I have those doubts, um, I probably talk to the people that I, I, I trust, you know, with, uh, you know, with that, you know, my family, um, and, and my friends and, um, you know, talk with them and about that. And just even just saying it out loud, like, ah, oh, I'm shit. I'm not fit. And then they're like, shake, give your head a shake. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Dose of reality is nice. Ah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, I think that's, I think that's nice. So surrounding yourself with the right people is always a good support system is always helpful. Um, but internally, I don't know, man, like self, yeah, that confidence issue, I, I you know, I got to figure out, but it's definitely, it definitely creeps in, you know, probably day to day in small amounts. Um, but that overall, uh, you know, you, 
you got to just, you got to believe in yourself, right? And so like I really, and I've always done this, like if it's listened to motivational, whatever, you know, if it's like, I remember looking at like motivational bodybuilding videos because they were always the best on yeah. YouTube and you just get jacked up and you, I did that all the time. And, you know, I listen to like people like with positive talk and you, you, you seek those things out over time, you can start to, to, to learn those tools. And so when you're in a funk, it's like, okay, how do I get out of it? Okay, well you, you do those, you know, affirmations and you, you get jacked up and you have that routine and then you have that like just gnarly fire and passion for what you're doing um that just outweighs it all outweighs all the doubt and so you know i want to make the games um if that happens awesome if it doesn't i'm i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna basically i'm gonna i'm gonna grind until i can't grind anymore um that fire i thought was out and it just wasn't even close so um, that, that internal drive is just there and it just outweighs all the doubt I have. Um, yeah. I love it. What do you tell somebody when they come to you and they say, Hey man, I want to be a high level CrossFit athlete and make it to, since we don't have regionals now, you know, sanctional or something yeah. like that. I want to be in the elite class. What do you tell them? Um, what do you think it takes to get there? Um, and then you can see how, f- how either, close they are to the actual answer or how disconnected they are from it. Um, Cause there's no, there's no one answer to it, but if someone's like, it's like, so how do you, what do you think it takes? It's like, well, you know, you got to like, you know, train your face off and you got to, you know, dial in your nutrition. It's like, okay, awesome. Yeah. And then, you know, so how are you going to do that? And it's like, well, I'm going to train my face off and I'm going to dial in my nutrition. <laughs> it's like, okay, awesome. So like, let's go like day to day. Let's break it down. Like, these are what you need to do. This is what you need to do. It's like, oh yeah, but I go out Friday nights. It's like, okay, well you don't do that anymore. <laughs> or you do it once a month or right? you still live, but like, that's not your priority anymore. And then you start having these conversations, you start dialing it in because it's like, are you willing to sacrifice a lot of your life for this? Like if you want to be a games athlete, if you want to be a high level athlete, you have to sacrifice and you just find out if they're willing to, um, you know, and you find out where they are. So it's like, is it just, is it a, is it a dream or is it like a passion? right? Are they just thinking they want to, or do they actually, um, and it might not take one conversation, probably won't. It'll probably take like a month of training, two months, a year, two years, whatever it does. Um, but you ask them like, well, what do you think it takes? And then, you know, well, this is what my experience is. This is what I believe it takes to get to that top end. Um, I've done all those things and I still haven't made it, you know, I still have a lot of room to improve on. Uh, so yeah, you just, it's, it's more than you think. Um, but it's like, I don't know. It's, it, it, it's a cool, it's a cool life to live at least to, to strive for it. Um, yeah. so it's just, as long as it's something that they want to do. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you just, you, you gotta, you gotta want it. Right. And you yeah. gotta be willing to, to, to sacrifice a little and sacrifice a lot to get there. So see if they're willing to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. In, uh, in wrapping it up, is there anything that we haven't talked about that we should have talked about that you can think of? And I realize that's kind of a loaded question because we could probably talk for hours about things. So <laughs> yeah, probably Dave's arches is probably the number <laughs> one. Um, you know, Dave Spur, uh, coach at only, um, he is, you know, he has the weakest arches in the game. Um, and, uh, if no one, knows about Dave's arches. Um, we are going to, my, my plan is to, is to film of him working out where it's primarily arch work. And just so everybody can just see, see, see how, how much joy his, uh, the pain in his arches brings to everybody else. Um, I remember a workout we had at, uh, uh, in Vernon and it was, uh, you know, uh, Jeremy Meredith, Tyson, uh, uh, Fikowski, myself, um, you know, we were all down there training and Dave was working out and it was kind of like a, a pre-regionals comp and we did a workout. I don't even remember what it was. And Dave is our, Dave's arches blew up literally every workout we did, but like guys were having to rip his shoes off and like, it's just, <laughs> ah, my arches is the greatest thing ever. Uh, so, you know, if, if you don't know about his arches, like we, we got to let the world know, like right. this is something pretty special. We'll see if we can find a video or something. To, oh, there's to gotta be a picture. I, yeah. Fitzy might have it or I'll, I'll see if uh jeremy does but uh, it's just 
the glory in his eyes when that arch pain sets in. It's just, it brings joy to me. So, <laughs> so if we can find one of these videos or pictures, we're going to put it on the show notes page and that's going to be at the get better project.com slash 24. So if you guys, if we did a good job, it will be sitting there. Oh. And it, if not, maybe, you know, I'm going to try and find some images and or videos of your uh, hundred wall balls and maybe your attire that you were wearing in regionals. Oh yeah. Um, with the Nike free. I'm gonna Nike freeze my gong show hat yep. uh, you should also um, the 50 deadlifts that was pretty impressive oh. too so like the rowing deadlift box jump over dips and then you have wall balls and then you have to go back on the deadlifts did 50 unbroken at 185 Ooh. carried the bar over spine wasn't straight one time <laughs> I don't even think standing my spine was straight uh, on the 50 wall balls didn't put the wall ball down, didn't do it unbroken. I thought it would be a good idea just to hold on to the wall ball of while course. you did it, right? Because yeah. four is lava, right? Yeah. Um, so, God, like there's so many just ridiculous things. But like, <laughs> I wish I could go back to those days where like you just like in competition, you just, it didn't matter. Like you're just like, I'm doing these unbroken. Don't care how tired I am. Right. Don't care how unrealistic and horrible strategy it is. <laughs> right. So that like you could just tap into that like inner you where just, he, he just didn't care. Uh, <laughs> those, that would be the best. Cause I think when you, when you get, uh, when you get more experience, you think too much, right? Like mm-hmm. I just want to black out and just carry that bar over, uh, you know, get back to those days. Those would be the best. Just learn what you're made uh, of. Ah, exactly. Of <laughs> yeah. Like, why? Why did you do? Not one person did that. I'm like, yeah, not one person did that. Like, they, they must all be brutal. And it's like, no, they're smart. And they <laughs> paced it out. And it's like, well, I came third in that workout. So. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I love it. So we're going to try and find a highlight video of you and put it on the show notes oh, page. So yeah. I'm going to sure, I'm gonna do some, some work. <laughs> it, might, it might take me a, an extra week to get this, this podcast <laughs> up just because of that. So yeah. hopefully I'll have something really good for you guys. Um, Let's talk last thing about only training. Let's plug that and, and plug, you know, where people can follow you. So if you could tell us about what only training is, if they didn't listen to the last podcast, how they can get involved with you as a coach and or follow you as you, you know, crush this path to the games. Yeah, man. Um, only training. Um, I got on board with, uh, uh, Dave Spur and Mitch Barnard. Um, you know, I, I kind of just heard them little rumblings about it. And so I messaged them and said, Hey, like, you know, I kind of like what you're talking about. Um, get me involved somehow. Um, so we got on the phone and, uh, we connected and, uh, you know, we're, we're, uh, an, an athlete's training blog. So, uh, paid training blog. We also have a free blog where people can kind of try out our workouts through the paid, uh, training blog. There's going to be, you know, intense and extra, extra work and stuff like that. Um, but these are, you know, we understand like, a one-on-one coach is a lot of, it's, it's an investment, right? Um, some people don't have that type of investment or aren't willing to put in the time maybe just yet. Um, we believe that we've created a program, um, that allows people to experience high level coaching at, an, at, at a price that's affordable, maybe for, for now or, you know, forever. Um, and we, we believe that we're doing something different within the training format. Um, you know, being able to learn when to, to bring it down, learn when to bring it up. Um, we, we believe we do a very good job at that. And that's something that we're extremely passionate about. And we want to reach as many people as possible. So we don't want to handcuff ourselves to just a small group of people. We do take individual clients if you're looking for that next level or if you're rehabbing from an injury or whatever you just like that intimate setting we do that as well and uh and and again we really enjoy that we love doing that we love having one-on-one clients um but we can have a broader reach you know through through a blog and if we can impact more people to to train a little smarter and train a little better and be part of an unreal community um i think that's you know i think that's our, our main mission and we do love the community like you know, we're all beauties out there, right? So like we're, we're cool people to hang out with. At least we think so. Uh, maybe <laughs> not Mitch, but, uh, uh, we, uh, you know, we, we, we love having, you know, we use sugar wad for, for our programming and we have a good community in there and you can follow the leaderboard and you can chat and you can chirp, uh, and you know, you can give each other fist bumps and stuff like that, which is really awesome. Um, and, and we want to build that, that only community, the people that, you know, love to rep the brand and love to, to train hard and, uh, you know, learn about themselves and, and learn a new style of training that we think is, is, is missed, especially in the training blog format. Sure. Um, 
And so we're really excited about that, really passionate. You can find us on uh, Only Training on Instagram, or Training Only, uh, I think it's the, the way it goes. Uh, and then our uh, uh, website is uh, Training Only, I believe, as well. Um, and yeah, you know, if you, you can always DM me at Gib uh, underscore Only Training. Um, and if you have any questions, I, I don't have very many followers, so I'll get back to you right away. <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, we... Uh, we're excited. We, we, we feel like we can, you know, we can help, you know, help fill the gap in, uh, that's, you know, from the personalized fitness world to the, you know, group blogging or group training world where we can find that place in the middle where we're, we're impacting, you know, the most people and we're, 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 I'm stuttering here, but you know, we're, uh, you know, we're relaying our experience um, and what we've done and what we've succeeded with and what we've struggled with. And I think we've, we have a really good team setting that way. Um, and actually we just added uh, Emily Tanner as well. Um, who's going to fix my handstand push-ups? Nice. So we got Dave Smith fixing my snatch, uh, you know, Emily fixing my handstand push-ups, and Mitch hopefully fixing my portfolio. So, hey. uh, you know, we're hitting it at all angles there. Right. <laughs> um, and then I'm just there for the comic relief, I guess. Right. They just keep me around. I'm a good locker room guy. Right. Good, put on the good tunes, like get everyone fired up, right? Yeah. You know, not a ton of skill, but like just just nice guy to hang out with. Like you want to come, you want to get to the arena because I'm there, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. 100, 150 wall balls in a row. That's, all day. That's it. All day long. Yeah. yeah. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so guys, if you haven't listened to the podcast that we did, that was the one before this at thegetbetterproject.com slash 23, where they talk in depth about only training, you should definitely do that. Um, it's a very innovative, interesting concept and program that I think is awesome. So I would highly recommend that you check that out and definitely follow John on Instagram because he said he needs more followers and uh, that'll bring my confidence up for sure. Yeah. I mean, it brings all of our confidence up. That's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. How many people are following you? That's it. That's determines if you're a good person. I think this day and age, that's what high schoolers are ranking their popularity on. So like if we want to be like high schoolers and that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. I'll chop my hair off, get a fade. Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Tight pants. Totally. Anything you could do to stand out, Instagram. You know what I've seen with young kids actually right now? What's is there it, Like champions coming back, right? You see champion everything. You know what I've seen kids wear into the gym? They roll in with those like high top like champion socks. Really? And I'm just like, I have like 800 pairs of those from Costco. Oh. And like they were never cool when I grew up. Like yeah. they were the ones that you had like underneath, like in your snow boots and everything. And yep. now kids are just like flocking and running at like big high. And I'm just like, what? Like... Like you literally go to Costco and get like 800 pairs and they probably <laughs> bought them for like 30 bucks from like a specialty store. I'm like, what's going on here? Like, this is, this is no good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, that one blew my mind and I'm into this. I'm, I'm all about that sock game too, but like, I'm not going back into the champion sock world. I, I don't get even, a clue. Like, I don't even know what to what's say. What's going on that. with the youth? Yeah. I, it's ridiculous. I, I don't understand it at all. But yeah. uh, well, what are you going to do? Right? This is the kind of stuff that you're going to get if you follow John on Instagram though. Yeah. Um, socks and sandals. Yeah. Yeah. That's real life. Absolutely. Yeah. Comfort and style. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, John, this has been awesome. I appreciate your time and uh, maybe we'll do it again sometime. This Absolutely, cool. man. No. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by PG. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. We'll talk to you soon. Talk to you soon, my man. Hey guys, that was my interview of six-time CrossFit Regionals athlete, John Gibson. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. John's just a fantastic guy, and I highly recommend that you get behind him and root him on this CrossFit and the next CrossFit seasons as he tries to make it to the CrossFit Games. I also recommend that you check out the show notes at thegetbetterproject.com slash John Gibson. And make sure you're following John on all of his social channels because he posts some really cool stuff. So if you guys have any questions at all, hit me up, joe at thegetbetterproject.com. Again, I hope you enjoyed this interview with John Gibson, and I will see you soon. Thank you for listening to the Get Better Project, Project. hosted by Joe Bauer. If you'd like to leave us a podcast review, head over to thegetbetterproject.com slash iTunes. Now get going and take action on something that will make you better today. Better today.